Well, shares of DoorDash are taking a hit in the session right now, down nearly 3%. The stock has been up more than, uh, still more than 70% off of its 52-week high, though, caught up in the tech sell-off. I caught up with co-founder and CTO Andy Fang at the Collision Conference in Toronto last week to discuss the recent declines in tech and asked him how the food delivery giant is balancing its growth ambitions with investor expectations for profitability. People ask us, should I focus on growth or should I focus on profitability? And what we always tell people is the best companies figure out how to do both. And actually, if you rewind back to probably 2015 and 2017, we actually were struggling a lot to raise money back then. Um, and we actually had to operate that way because there was no additional cash coming in the bank and we had to figure out how to grow at the same time. And so I think that's been a really good focusing principle that's really helped educate the teams to figure out how to think creatively because when you think creatively with those types of constraints you can really disrupt and innovate really um, in ways you want to have been thought were possible previously. Inflation obviously a very big concern and I'm thinking about DoorDash and your you know your core business with um, restaurants I mean Dashers with gas prices as well as restaurants with food prices getting hit on both ends how have you seen that impact? Um, we've, we are, we want to continue to have a dialogue with merchants and dashers to figure out ways in which, where we can continue to help them during these types of situations. And so we, we've had a lot of conversations with the dasher advisory councils that we've spun up in different regions and different markets, uh, figuring out ways in which we can help them have gas rewards so that they can basically redeem rewards to pay for gas. Um, and one thing that we've done that's been very unique in our industry is we haven't raised prices for merchants or customers during this inflationary time period. And so uh, we want to continue to find ways to support uh, all three sides of our marketplace. And you know, we, I think it's just really important for us to continue to keep a close ear to the dashers and merchants and continue to stay agile in terms of how we can react. You just closed a very big acquisition, um, Colt, which, as I understand it, allows you to expand to what, more than 20 countries, yes, correct? Yes, that's correct, yes. How does that change the scale with which you see the business? I mean, you've, you've obviously been operating in Canada, largely still North America, though. Yes. This really takes it to another level. Absolutely, I think we've always had an ambition to be a global company. Uh, but with the partnership with Bolt, I think we're going to be able to fast forward those ambitions. Um, we're really excited about Mickey and the leadership team. I think we're very culturally aligned with the leadership and with the company in general. Um, and we have a lot of faith and trust in their CEO, Mickey, to run the DoorDash International joint business. And so I think, um, I think it's going to be accretive to what we've been able to accomplish so far. And obviously, given it's just closed, um, there's a lot of excitement uh, around what we can accomplish moving forward. With but as, as you think about your global ambitions, is it still primarily going to be focused on restaurant and food delivery outside of the U.S.? You've obviously dabbled in convenience business. You've got other growth areas now. The global level, what's going to be the focus? Um, I think this industry is very hyper-local. So our success in the U.S., doesn't necessarily translate 100% to success outside the U.S. Um, and so I think we really want to just listen to the customers that are in the various markets, figure out ways in which we can satisfy their convenience needs. And something that's been very consistent has been, can you deliver things outside of restaurant food to me? And you know, conven the convenience and grocery verticals have been very successful early innings for us. Um, you know, for example, in Canada, we just announced a partnership with Loblaw. Uh, to do grocery delivery, and that's been something that uh, the teams have been very excited about. And so, just in these other countries, figuring out ways in which we can partner with grocers, with merchants, uh, to figure out ways in which we can deliver anything in your city to you. That was DoorDash co-founder and CTO Andy Fang. And Brian, you know, going back to his first answer, I think that's kind of an interesting point that we've heard from some tech companies where he says back in 2015, 2017, they were kind of in a position where they didn't have money. So, they, you know, his argument is we've been here before. The difference is, of course, now they are a publicly traded company um, that has to answer to shareholders. And as we've seen with their competitors, like in Uber, they have come out and said, look, this is not the time necessarily to talk about growth at all costs. Um, 
and that profitability is more important. He's arguing we can do both at the same time and that their business case, the fact that the business has still been sticky, people are still asking for food delivery and grocery deliveries proves the point that they can do both. Yeah, and look, I mean, you know, when you take a look at the stock, it's down, what, 50% year to date. I mean, that's worse than we've seen in the majors, but not anything unusual compared to a lot of tech companies. So yes, the stock price itself is perhaps uh, some indicator of how investors feel about the company. But at the end of the day, I think what they're saying is what a lot of other companies are saying as well, which is that you know, this is an environment where it's not going to be as easy to, to do fundraising. Uh, it's very much a story about cash flow and growing from your own cash flow. That's something that Tony Hsu, uh, the CEO, has talked about as well. So I think that for the underlying business, what we were hearing from Andy in your interview is essentially that they're just going to continue with the strategy right now. They've been in a type of operating environment where it's tough to fundraise before. But look, they're a larger company now than they were in 2015, and they have more cash flows to go from now than they did about seven years ago. Yeah, and, and there's one other headwind that you know we did talk about, um, not necessarily in that interview, but off camera, which is about what they're facing with regulators. And, and we saw the city of Seattle, for example, most recently move forward with this plan to, to require these companies, including DoorDash, to pay these delivery workers per minute, per mile. And you know his argument is that, look, our thinking behind this platform still being a flexible platform hasn't necessarily evolved, but those conversation with government officials are continuing. Uh, you know, that, that's another thing that we don't talk about as often, but that, yeah. that still exists because so many different cities have put forward different types of regulation that could affect these, you know, DoorDash's, Ubers of the world in a big way. Yeah, and DoorDash in its short corporate history as a publicly traded company, I'm sure has invested a lot into uh, just kind of the legal side of things, their regulatory affairs division to deal with all those issues, which actually, as you mentioned, are going to be different depending on what locality you're looking at. It means you got to have a lot of bodies on hand on that team to make sure you can handle all of those issues. But great interview. Uh, and you can catch the full thing, by the way, on yahoofinance.com.